Hello, everyone. Welcome to our podcast. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, today's an important topic. Um, we hear this all the time from our prospects, from our clients. Um, it's a scary topic, especially when um, you know you work so hard for your assets and you want to get it down and make sure it goes to their family. Um, but then they realize, oh, no, I, what if I have dementia like my mom did? Or what if I have a stroke and now all of a sudden I'm home and homebound and, and someone has to take care of me? Um, what if, you know, there's a car accident, you have, you're in a coma? These are all reasons that people would need um, more of a care that's, that's 24 hours or even, you know, mostly 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a special guest today. Jesse Sloan has been kind enough to join us today, and he has the expertise um, to give us some really good information, so I'm really excited. And so, Jesse, why don't you introduce yourself and then um, kind of give us an understanding of what you do. Yeah, thank you. That's great. So I think when people come to me, they think automatically like, oh my gosh, I have to get on Medicaid in order for me to get this type of care. And then they realize they can't qualify for Medicaid. It's very difficult. Um, so I always share in my seminars and even in, in initial consultations that there's this wonderful way to pay for it in a, in a different, um, more <coughs> different than the traditional long-term care insurance. So you want to share a little bit about what the options are out there?
That's great. Um, and that's so true. The, the whole thing that people has this misunderstanding. Most people tell me, I want to stay home. I definitely don't want to go into a nursing home. And then they hear all the costs of nursing homes is, is kind of, a, you know, I, you know, you're, you're eye popping. <laughs> um, Right. But I will, um, you know, give you a little backlash on that, because I think what's hard is that middle ground. So certainly if you have accumulated a couple million dollars and up, you have that luxury of paying for care at home. Right. Generally, you also have the impoverished. They can get on Medicaid quick sooner rather than later than most people. It's that middle ground, which is most people, most people in my database have maybe saved up between 500,000 to a million dollars. And if one of the couple has to go into a nursing home at $100,000 a year, it's gone. Those savings are gone. Yeah. And the second person is not able to have any money. So what I'm saying, my point is when people come to a lawyer, they're like, how do I hide my money? How do I get on Medicaid sooner rather than later? There are right. options. It depends right. on the, 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 the health um, of the people, of the couple or the single person. And it, it depends on their assets and their income. So all of that is in. in What is really important for people to hear in their 50s, early 60s, and this information is so important for my clients because they're asking me, well, what if I have to go in? And I'm like, well, we're not doing Medicaid planning right now because you're only 58. Um, but definitely talk to this person about long-term care options. There are so many different ways to take care of this cost, not just straightforward long-term care insurance, which to me is like car insurance. You use it and lose it, right? You, you, you pay every year, no car accidents, nothing, it's gone, right? So I know there's a lot of hybrid types of policies. And that's one of the things that, again, I don't sell this stuff, so I don't know all the ins and outs, but I just know about them.
Yeah. And I, I think what you're saying with the, um, you know, the lottery ticket, I think with traditional long-term care, it's possible. Let's just say you, you pay for it, you sign up and in a year you have a major stroke, right? And then you're able to, you need to use it. Right. But the likelihood is you're going to buy it in your fifties. You might not need this care until late seventies, eighties, and then you had paid into the system. Right. So Tell us about that underwriting process. What is um, needed when you go through that and what types of things will will probably deny you of getting that traditional long-term care?
Got it. And so what if they went that route? Well, no, I wouldn't even say that. I'm going to ask a, 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 a separate question is, is the underwriting to get the life insurance with the, you know, rider different or less? Got it. Okay. Well, that makes sense. All right. Well, I think this has been great information. Is there anything else you think, Jesse, that we we should be able to? I didn't even know that such an organization exists, which is so great for, for consumers to find out. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you so much for all the information. And if any of you ever have questions on this topic, please, please, please call me and then I'll guide you as to who to talk to in terms of this topic because it's super important and you should know at least make some informed decisions for yourself and for your family.